Welcome to the Door Roller Money Podcast. I'm your host, Rob Berger. Today in episode 316, I'm going to describe for you my cashback strategy. It's my plan to generate a million dollars in wealth through cashback rewards. Yes, that's a little audacious, but you know, given enough time, just about anything is possible. Before we get to that, I want to share a little bit about my book that's coming out in September, Retire Before Mom and Dad. And for you mom and dads out there, you know, it's for you too, because, you know, we all want to get control of our finances. I mentioned, I think, in a previous show that we're working on cover design, and I shared three designs with the Facebook group. Now, if you're not a member of the Facebook group, please join doorroller.net slash Facebook group. We'll send you right to the Facebook group. You can join, and we'd love to have you. So I... Um, I had three cover options. I put them all up in Facebook for reaction. Now, what I didn't tell the Facebook folks, the Facebook group members, because I didn't want to influence their opinion, not that I could anyway, right? I didn't like any of them, not at all, uh, all for different reasons. And uh, But I put them up there, I wanted to get reaction. So I can't, I can't even remember if I showed showed these covers in this podcast, because remember, the podcast is not just audio. We also do a video, which you can check out on YouTube. I don't even remember if I shared these last time, I guess because I'm getting old. I don't know. My memory's like shot. I can remember things from like the 70s. It's yesterday that gives me trouble. Anyway, uh, for those watching on video, I'm going to quickly show you the three covers that I didn't like that I shared in the Facebook group. Then I'm going to show you the actual final cover, the one I've chosen. So we're looking at the first one. You know, it wasn't bad. I didn't like all the dollar signs. You know, the colors were a little, I think maybe a little too much. <laughs> I, I kind of was thinking something a little more subtle. Uh, but in any event, I liked the subtitle, uh, The Simple Numbers Behind a Lifetime of Financial Freedom. Uh, so it was okay, but I didn't think anything special. The next one, which had a piggy bank, this was the one that most folks in the Facebook group liked. Uh, but they didn't like Freedom First, Lattes Second. That was the subtitle in this cover. Boy, it was brutal. I mean, people are sick of that. I don't. I hope it's not the principle. I, I know I alluded to this in the last show because the principle is rock solid and it's not, got nothing to do with lattes. In fact, today's episode really is taking the latte factor but applying it in a, a completely different way. It's not about... Uh, uh, not spending money, but when you do spend it, doing it in a smart way and, and getting some cash back rewards and then saving and investing them. It's still the latte factor, just, well, a little different. In any event, they didn't like that subtitle, Freedom First, Latte Second. But they kind of liked the piggy bank, and I get it. Now, the third one, uh, I think of all the three, they liked this the least. Boom, my picture. Uh, some thought it was too Dave Ramsey-esque in the sense that, you know, I guess he has his picture on the cover of all his books. I don't know. You know, a lot of, a lot of authors do that. It's not really my style, as I, as I know I mentioned in the last show. But this was the, uh, anyway, this got, people tried to be nice about it. But basically they said, Rob, put your picture like, you know, on, on the back where no one will look. I said, I get it. Okay, fine. So this is what I ended up with, if I can find it. Here it is. So, uh, retire before mom and dad, the simple numbers behind a lifetime of financial freedom. I really like the color. Uh, I like this illustration, uh, which of course, if you're listening to this in audio, check out the YouTube video. Uh, it's, you know, it's unique, it's different. And I think it conveys a sense of, of spontaneity and fun and freedom. And that's what I wanted. Uh, the back cover, this design is pretty much what it'll look like, but the text is gonna change. All of this has been rewritten. So there you go. Retire before mom and dad. I think we've got our cover. So now I'm not sure what's next. I'll find out tomorrow when I have a phone call with the folks that are helping me. So for the folks in the Facebook group that, that um, left comments about the covers, thank you. They helped tremendously. I hope you all like what I ended up going with. It's always a tough thing because no matter what you decide, you know, not everyone can be happy, such is life. All right. So on to the main topic for the show. And uh, here's, uh, oh my goodness, let me get that off the screen. Here we go. All right, the main topic of the show, cashback rewards 
And what I wanted to do, and I've mentioned this in a show, oh, maybe a month or so ago, was that I started uh, to uh, take a different approach to cashback rewards, not just with credit cards, but we'll talk about that. But what I wanted to do was focus on generating as much, within reason, as much cash back as I could from money I'm gonna spend anyway, and then invest it all. In my case, I'm gonna invest it and have started to invest it in, in stock of Berkshire Hathaway, Warren Buffett's company, which I've invested in the past. But I've got a separate account uh, just for cashback rewards. It goes into Berkshire stock. So at any one time, I know exactly what my balance is and that it all comes from some form of cashback rewards. So uh, right now it's around $2,500, $2,600. Not bad, huh? And uh, at least I don't think it's bad. And, but I'm adding to it. So my plan is, is once a quarter, so we're in June now, early June, at the end of the month, uh, at the end of the what would be the second quarter of 2019, I'm going to add up all my cash back, which I'm going to go through in a minute, uh, and buy more Berkshire Hathaway stock with it. And I'm going to do that once a quarter. And uh, what I wanted to do was get a good balance between maximizing cash back rewards, but without you know, going too overboard because, you know, I wanted to keep it as simple as possible. I mean, you know, I guess I could have carried whatever, 10 credit cards and depending on exactly which store we were at, you know, hand out another credit card. I didn't want to get that crazy, but I wanted to do a little more than just uh, what I, what a previous approach, which was to just use one credit card for everything. So I tried to, you know, get a happy medium and I think I've done it. So what I'm going to do is sort of walk through uh, how I generated cash back for this quarter, where it's coming from. I'm going to give you the specific credit cards I'm using, as well as an additional website that earns that can earn you cash back. That's obviously not a credit card. And I'm going to talk about that. It's called Ebates. I'm sure many of you have heard of it. Uh, but I learned something new about Ebates uh, in the last month that I didn't know, and it generated some extra cash back for me. So I'm going to share that with you as well. So let's, let's kind of go through uh, the list. And for those... Uh, watching the video, you will see on the screen a, a pretty simple typed up list, but I'm going to walk through it. So the first thing, by the way, I'm going to have over $2,100 in cashback rewards to add to Berkshire Hathaway stock. Now, I won't generate that much every quarter, uh, as, as you'll see in a minute, but $2,149.13 so far, uh, plus I'm going to earn more in the month of June before I cash it out, so it'll be a little bit higher. So where'd it come from? Well, the first $100 came from City Thank You points that I had generated years ago uh, from a City Thank You card that doesn't even exist uh, anymore. And they just sat there. I didn't know what to do with them. And so, you know, as I thought through this process, I'm like, you know, I guess I could turn those into cash and invest it in Berkshire Hathaway stocks. That wasn't too difficult. Uh, so that's 100 bucks, uh, the first 100 bucks to get me started. Uh, the second one I want to mention, this is sort of my everyday go-to card. If I don't have a better credit card to use, this is the one I use, and it's the City Double Cash. I've mentioned it in the distant past in the show. It's basically a 2% cashback card. You get 1% when you make purchases. You get 1% when you pay for the purchases. We pay our credit cards off in full every month, so it's a 2% card. Uh, it's no annual fee, and so it, it works. It's great, and we're going to have... I. I, I <laughs> I probably shouldn't tell you this. It like, it like gives away how much, I guess, ridiculous amount of money we've spent. But uh, be that as it may, we've, we got $408.42 at the moment. And it's just sitting there. I haven't taken it out yet. I'm going to wait till the end of June. I'll take it out. Hopefully, I think there'll be a little bit more by then. And that'll go towards um, Berkshire Hathaway stock. Now, the City Double Cash card is not your only option for your sort of 2% cashback standard card. There's also, you can get the Fidelity uh, Visa uh, that pays 2%, but it gets paid into a Fidelity account. And it's no, you, you can always move it if you want to, but if you don't have a Fidelity account, maybe not the best option. But if you do, uh, it is uh, another option. And then for those of you that bank at uh, Bank of America, they have a premier war rewards card that depending on how much money you have at Bank of America, including uh, Merrill Edge, you know, their, their investment arm, you can actually do better than 2%. And if you have over a hundred grand there, and granted, it's a lot of money, not everyone's gonna have that. But if you do, uh, I think you get a 75%, I think it's 75% bonus. And that can take you up, depending on the purchase, to over two and a half percent, I believe. It's not a card I've used, 
But for you Bank of America fans out there, I wanted to mention it. So City Double Cash is not the only game in town when it comes to 2% or higher on all purchases. Uh, so you've got some other options. It's the one I use. I've used it for years. And it's, it's my go-to card when I don't have a better option. And at 2%, it's a great, it's a great deal. So that's, that's number two. Now, number three, uh, I use the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. Now, this is, this is one that has a big annual fee. It's 450 bucks, but you get a $300 annual travel credit. And of course, if you're starting new, you get a sign-up bonus. I'm not gonna mention it. You can check it out online or on doorroller.net. The reason I'm not gonna mention the bonus is simply that it, it can change from time to time. So if you go to doorroller.net and check out the travel cards, you'll find it. Uh, but it, it has, I, I, when I got it, it had a huge sign-up bonus because I got it when it first came out. They've lowered it since then, but it's still a, a pretty significant sign-up bonus. But here's the deal on, the, on Chase Sapphire Reserve. You earn three points for all travel uh, purchases and dining out. And then if you redeem them for travel through Chase Ultimate Rewards, you get a 50% uh, bonus. So in effect, for those two categories of purchases, you're looking at 4.5% return. And I found Chase Ultimate Rewards to be very easy to use. We have no problem using the rewards for travel. We travel enough throughout the year. And again, you know, it's not always you know, big exotic trips. Sometimes we're going to see our daughter, our daughter in Missouri, right? And it pays for the hotel or whatever. So for this quarter, uh, we've got a couple of sort of big numbers. The first one from, again, from Chase Sapphire Reserve, $186.35. And that was from, uh, again, rewards we redeemed for a hotel when we went to visit our daughter. Uh, but then we accumulated uh, a lot of points that we haven't used yet, but I'm gonna sort of cash them in, not through Chase, but in my own math, at the end of June, and of course we'll use them later, but that totals $551.45. Now that's not normal for us, but that's the value of those points. The reason is because we took a trip to Greece. So again, not every quarter will be quite this big for us, but we put a lot of, uh, of, of the travel charges uh, on Chase Sapphire Reserve and got a lot of points. Uh, so I like the Chase Sapphire Reserve card. The, the, the Chase Sapphire Preferred is another great option with a lower uh, annual fee. The one thing to keep in mind with that is the bonus when using points in the Chase Ultimate Rewards for travel is 25% for the Sapphire Preferred, 50% for Sapphire Reserve. But again, if you're looking for a, a card with a lower annual fee, that's another option. Again, you can find all of these on Dough Roller. Net. All right, the next one is actually the Amazon Prime card. We use that for all of our Amazon purchases and all of our uh, uh, purchases at um, Whole Foods, which of course is now owned by Amazon. In both cases, you get 5% cash back, which is hard to beat. We're an Amazon Prime member. Now, uh, we don't actually shop at Whole Foods very often, but I'm moving. I should say my wife and I are moving because I've insisted that she come with me. Now, we're not moving far. For those watching on the video, you can kind of see my shop behind me is in disarray, which is saying a lot because it didn't look all that great to begin with, but we're getting our house ready for sale. We're not moving far, about 10 minutes, but where we're moving is literally a three-minute drive to a Whole Foods. We can walk it in about 15 minutes, so uh, maybe we'll use it more than uh, we'll see. But of course, we use it online at Amazon. Uh, we don't have a ton of cashback rewards this quarter from that card, $44.10, but I'll take every penny. So we've got that. Uh, one card that doesn't show up in this quarter's tally because I just got it is the Amex Blue Cash Preferred. Uh, um, it's a card that pays 6% on groceries up to $6,000 in spending annually, then it goes down to 1%, and I believe it's 3% on, on gas. So I got that card for, again, groceries and gas primarily. So we'll be using that. Uh, and then I've got two Capital One business credit cards. And uh, one I'll be, I'll be closing. It's the, it's the Spark uh, Miles. And on my notes, I see I've mistyped it. There we go. Uh, so we have $235 worth of miles on that card that we'll use for travel. The trick there, and this is true with the Venture card as well, you get two miles for every dollar spent, but they're only they're worth a penny, which is what you'd normally expect, 
but only if you use them to uh, pay for travel expenses that you've charged to the card. You don't have to book through Capital One, but if you you know book a hotel or airline, you have to use the card and then you use your, your miles to, in effect, erase those purchases. If you don't do it that way, if you just say, yeah, I just want the cash, they're only worth half a penny. Uh, so it, effectively making it a 1% card. So if you're gonna use, they're great cards, you just have to remember to use them for travel. Uh, so we have $235 worth of miles on that card. The, the card that I moved to is the Capital One Spark Cash card. And the reason I did is because I just want to focus on cash. And it had a sign up bonus. And I needed to spend, I think it's $3,000, which I did for my business in, in three months. And we got a $500 bonus. And then I've used it for other things. So we're up to $623. And 85 cents on that card. Again, that's not going to repeat itself because of the bonus, uh, but it turned out to end up, you know, it turned out to be a nice quarter uh, for us. Again, $2,149 and 13 cents, plus whatever additional we earn in, in the next couple of weeks in June. One thing I'll say about sign up bonuses I think they're great, and we took advantage of them for the Capital One business card. Chase has a number of business cards, with one with a um, uh, one ink card has a sign-up bonus can be worth a thousand dollars. So there, there's big sign-up bonuses, and that's terrific. I'm not one to sign up for a card, get the bonus, and then cancel the card. I mean, part of it is just that's just life is too short. It's just too much, uh, and I just prefer to find a card that I'm going to use long term. And but also, you know, I factor in the bonus, but it's only part of the equation for me. But I'll keep all of these cards. I am going to close the one Capital One card because I've replaced it with another. Uh, but other than that, uh, you know, I've earned bonuses, I think, on just about all of these cards when I got them. But I've had them like, you know, I've had the Amazon Prime card for a long time, City Double Cash, I, I, probably since it came out, Chase Sapphire Reserve since it came out. So I tend to keep cards for a long, a long time. I think that's just the best approach. Now, all of that is credit cards and they're great. I'm going to take all that money, put it in, in Berkshire Hathaway stock. A couple of things and then I want to talk about Ebates. You know, there's some talk, do, do credit cards cause you to spend more money? I know that's the Dave Ramsey argument and I think it's absolutely valid. I think for a lot of people and maybe even in some ways, even myself, credit cards can cause you to spend more money. It, because it's so easy, it's painful when you're when you're actually paying out dollars, or even just using a debit card and seeing it subtracted from your bank account. Now, uh, I don't get too carried away with that. I mean, there are certainly some purchases where I know for a fact I'm not spending more just because I charge it, right? I don't put more gas in my car just because I charge it, and we don't buy more groceries. I'm confident just because we charge it. But you know. When, when you go out to eat more often, maybe, I don't think in our case, actually, we don't actually go out to eat all that much. So a bad example in our case. Uh, and if you watch the video, you can tell I don't spend money on clothes. But certain categories of expenses, I could see even for my wife and I maybe spending more than, than we might. That's something to think about. Also, this whole approach to cash back or travel rewards with credit cards, don't get, don't even mess with it. If you think you're going to go deep into debt with credit cards or you're not paying your credit cards off in full every month, it's just it's just not worth it. Uh, once you get control of your spending, once you're paying off your credit cards in full every month, once you have confidence that you have control over what you spend and what you don't spend, I think it's a, a viable option to generate money that in our case we're going to invest or to generate travel rewards that help you um, take trips that you might not otherwise take. I think that's great but not at the expense of your finances. So obviously you've got to evaluate that for yourself, but, but absolutely keep it in mind. None of this is worth it if the result's gonna be thousands of dollars, tens of thousands of dollars in, in debt. The interest rates, uh, the interest and the headache will far exceed any rewards you might earn. All right, now I mentioned Ebates. And uh, the site is, if you're not familiar with it, you, know, you, you, you join it for free. And the idea is this, if you're gonna buy something online, you can log into Ebates, go to the store. For example, I'm looking now at Ebates and they have Amazon. You can earn up to 5% cash back. And what you'll do is you'll, you'll follow the link on Ebates for whatever category of purchases you want. 
again, I'm looking at Amazon. They have links for apparel. They have links for furniture, for home improvement, jewelry. I mean, the list goes on. And uh, it'll take you to Amazon. You'll make your purchase just like you normally would. And what happens is, the way Ebates works is, Ebates is getting effectively a referral fee from Amazon. And what they're doing is sharing it with you. Right? That's, that's effectively how Ebates works. And I mentioned e Amazon as an example, but I mean, they, they have, you can use it for just about anything that you might buy online. Now, what I learned and didn't realize is that they have travel options. So for example, you can, you can um, stay at a hotel. They have Ebate, what they call Ebates Hotel, and you can get up to 5% cash back. So I've been booking some travel through Ebates Hotels. I've compared the prices. The prices are not more expensive just because you're going through um, Ebates. Now, there could be times when you might find a better deal in some websites, you know, travel sites, hotel sites. So you want to think about that. Uh, but uh, I've been booking some hotels through Ebates. So I get cash back through Ebates. Plus I get the cash back for whatever credit card I use. In my case, the Chase Sapphire uh, Reserve. Now you can see my balance is only $46.54. I've just really started to use Ebates. And we don't, we haven't been traveling that much since, well, since we got back from Greece, but we didn't use Ebates for that trip. I wish we would have. So uh, it could be another way to earn some cash back, again, for money you're going to spend anyway. And uh, it's something that I just learned about, thought I'd share it with you. So how much will all of this matter? Well, in my book, I actually talk about this strategy uh, with credit cards. I, I, it's literally like three paragraphs. The book really does, doesn't get into cash back rewards at all. Um, and it talks about credit card debt, but it doesn't really get into the nitty gritty of what I've just described for you, except to point out that, you know, even if you earn, let's say, just forget all of the different credit cards and the 5% cash back or the 6% cash back. Let's just say you go with a st standard 2% cash back card and you can charge X um, amount of money each month for expenses you're going to spend anyway. Um, over 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, the numbers, the potential return, I mean, it gets ridiculous. I mean, I think I, in the two or three paragraphs that I covered it in the book, I think at one point I just did the math out 45 years and it was like a half a million dollars. Now that doesn't adjust for inflation. Um, but of course, inflation will also cause your spending to go up. So you'll get more cash back. The, the, the point is, over time, this will really matter. So if I'm still doing this podcast 10 years from now and you're still listening, I'm going to be telling you every quarter, all right, I've put this much additional money in Berkshire Hathaway, B shares, not A shares, B shares that are trading, I don't know what they're trading at now, around 200 bucks, they've probably come down. You know, I don't know, 10 years from now, they're going to be trading at, what do you think? Well, four or $500 probably, who knows? Um, and it, it just adds up. It's a lot of money. In fact, in, in, in the book, I also talk about something that might be a little more common, and that is 401k matching from your employee, employer. And we look at, we go through how, just how valuable that can be over 10, 20, 30, 40 years. And not just in terms of dollars, but if you were trying to retire and you wanted to get to a point where let's say you had 25 times your annual expenses, how uh, taking advantage of a company match can shorten that time. And we're talking a couple of years. And that's just one little thing. Well, I wouldn't call it little. Uh, but that's just one thing. It doesn't affect your lifestyle at all, assuming you're going to contribute to a 401k anyway. It's a company match. And, you know, it has real, uh, a real meaningful impact in your, your finances. And that's true even if you don't want to retire early. You know, you, maybe you, want to, you love your job and you want to keep working. That's great. And you're just going to have piles of cash and more freedom and more options and more choices. And uh, I think that's a good thing. So uh, I hope you find this interesting if you kind of do the same thing. I, I, I would put myself somewhere in the middle in terms of the cashback gurus. There are folks that do all kinds of crazy things that are just, you know, uh, levels above me. So if you have your own strategies, your own credit cards that you use, or other ways to earn cash back besides cards and Ebates, uh, would you let me know? Send me an email, dartdoriller.net, or join the Facebook group, post it there. I'd like to learn. And happy to share what you share with me with uh, everyone else on the next podcast. So there it is. Hope you have a great day. Until next time, remember, the best thing money can buy is financial freedom.